Welcome to the Think Fitness Life Podcast, where we bring the mind, body, and gym together so you can improve your health, increase performance, and live your best life. For more information, visit thinkfitnesslife.com. Here are your hosts, Matt Gluckman and Eric Menchi. Chris Mandarino is the founder and CEO of Life Fuel, L Y F E Fuel which is a supplement company that's out to change the game a little bit. Aside from having the mission to inspire and empower change toward a healthier future by having nutrient-dense products, they also make sure that they are having quality, efficacy, and sustainability in their sourcing, in their recipes, and in the products that they offer to people. So sit back, enjoy the uh, podcast, I got a chance to talk to him about his story, um, how he got inspired to change the industry and what he's learned along the way and um, where they're at today. And it's a really fun podcast and I'm really excited to get to meet people like this who are impacting the world in such a positive way with such a bigger picture understanding for the environment and sustainable practices. Well, welcome, Chris. Thanks for being on the show. We look forward to hearing more about Life Fuel and your endeavors to make the world a healthier place through nutrition. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I think a lot of people miss the boat when it comes to nutrition. Tell me a little bit about why it's so important for people to be eating real whole foods. Yeah, I mean, that's a great opening question. I mean, first off and foremost, it's you know, what we've evolved to thrive on, right? So only in the like past 30 to 50 years, you know, really through the industrialization of our food system, have we gotten so far away to away from, you know, what we've always been designed to to eat today, you know, it doesn't all you got to do is go to the supermarket and you see the um, shelves, like the entire center of most supermarkets, even, you know, health food stores are just flooded with, these kind of science projects that are more, you know, chemicals than they actually are nutritive ingredients and and derived from real whole foods. And, you know, the result of that is what we're seeing now on, you know, really a national and, and even more so a global health perspective and the results of not putting, you know, nutrient dense real whole foods in our body and instead choosing, you know, chemical filled, junk to, to fuel our bodies. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. It's just so much easier I think, for people to, I mean, maybe it's for storage purposes or they don't have to cook as much. Cause just, you know, think, I think of something like a cereal or an oatmeal, something, you know, in a box and wrapped in plastic already. And you know, there, there is just a little bit of processing going into every product that's on the shelf. And I remember first coming up as a personal trainer, one of the first things we were taught to teach clients is like stick to the perimeter. Yeah, of, exactly. of, you know, like real vegetables, fruits, meats, mm-hmm. and anything in the aisles is going to be more, more processed. And, and to your point, like less nutritionally dense. So where did your journey begin in terms of understanding the nuances around nutrition? Like, was it a personal thing for you? Yeah, it really started as a personal thing. I think really my background as an athlete and trying to optimize for, you know, the performance aspect for so mm-hmm. long and really compete at a high level kind of um, drove me to always take a, a really vested interest in nutrition, right? Because it was an important way for me to be able to put on weight and lean mm-hmm. muscle and try to do it in the right way, even though a lot <laughs> of information that I received back at that time was, you know, nothing close to what I've learned and and what I know now. Right. So it's all about just caloric consumption, less Mm. on like the quality of that fuel and really heavy in animal proteins, whey Mm. protein and all that. So, you know, I was able to gradually put on weight, but it wasn't, you know, the best type of weight. And there was a lot of other, you know, health challenges that I faced as a result of kind of, you know, a lot of those kind of more highly inflammatory type foods that yeah. I was in my body. Yeah. I mentioned hearing more about the the health challenges you're facing by just consuming like that all the time. And, and a little bit more about the routine, like where you just, was it like scoops of, of powdered whey protein all the time? 
Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's, I think as an athlete, when you're training at that level and really trying to put on, you know, muscle mass and body mass, you know, it, you have to eat so much food, right? Like it, a lot of people don't understand how much you really have to eat to try to move the needle on the scale, especially when you're working out to that. So extent. much. Yeah. You're already burning so many calories. Yeah. I mean, in, in like, let's say just in like training camp, for example, you've got like two back then they still had like double days, right? So it's two, two and a half hour long practices. We're out in the summer heat, hundred plus degrees, you know, it's, and it's very physically demanding work and you've got some gym time in between. So like just that expenditure of energy, you've got to eat a ton just to replace what you're losing. I know like fluid wise and just like weight, you would weigh yourself before and after every practice and, and people would lose like 10 to 20 pounds just yeah. <laughs> in one day in two hours right and some people so, would kill for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it's like you know it's water weight but it's you know right. so to replenish and refuel after that to make sure you're putting those nutrients back in your body but i guess that the challenge was you know trying to do that entirely through just real whole foods became ch tough and that's why most athletes use some sort of you know protein supplement or shakes or something just to have you know, that high caloric density and the convenience to get that fuel in your body to replenish repair and meet that caloric intake and you know i think you know, that's mirrored with, you know, general population today, not that everybody's training to be, you know, a high level performance athlete, but just like that convenience of, you know, on demand, quick nutrition is why we kind of got in the, the mess that we're in to begin with, right? Where, you know, every food manufacturer has cut corners to make the goods cheaper and easier, and more convenient, really? but unfortunately at the detriment of, of health. And so, you know, that was part of, you know, our philosophy at Life Fuel is, you know, we, we knew that, you know, people weren't going to, you know, I guess, drastically change their lifestyle anytime soon. People aren't slowing down and adopting like the Italian way of living and CS <laughs> in the middle of the day, right? So we needed to meet that like uh, convenience aspect, aspects, but we wanted to do it through real whole food, um, plant-based nutrition to maintain yeah. the nutritional integrity and actually put back what's missing from food. Yeah. yeah. I think it's super crucial because a lot of people that I speak with or um, work with, they have some level of GI distress, whether that's bloating, whether it's gas all the time, whether they just can't process certain things. And it's funny how, I mean, it's not funny, but it's, it is crazy. Like how much, autoimmune disorders have popped up over in the last like 30, 40 years. And I can't help but look at just our, our food system and the way that, like you said, like we take so many shortcuts. And I remember also just being taught about nutrition. I, I'm someone who has ulcerative colitis. So even when I'm in the hospital with, with gastroenterologists, they're just like, no, it doesn't matter what you eat. It, yeah. the, food, the food doesn't affect it. And I'm like, how oh, is great. it not affecting it? You know, and just something that it's like really... I guess, mis, misdiagnosed and overlooked. And I think it plays a big role. So I'm curious, did you have any like GI issues when you were having all those supplements and just trying to pack on food? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the biggest things. So there was a ton of just like throughout the entire gastrointestinal tract was really bothering me. Massive, yeah, massive heartburn that was like extremely yeah. painful and terrible to deal with, you know, just after eating like a normal meal, you know, gut was a mess, like very gassy, bloated all the time type thing. And that's not pleasant for <laughs> anybody, obviously. That was really, and, I, and just overall, like a higher amount of inflammation, which you feel in your, your joints and your bones and, and everything so much more, especially if you're carrying around, you know, excess weight, like I was, and I had to, right? Everything just aches a bit more. And I would say also like energy levels were very inconsistent. You know, you want to, you eat and you want to go like immediately take a nap or something and just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this cycle, which a lot of people are right. You're caffeinating to stay energized and that's not necessarily <laughs> they think, right. They think it's needed. It's like, you know, it's like stimulants in the morning, depressants at night type of deal. Uh, and they just keep on that roller coaster. Exactly. Exactly. Right. You know, I'm curious also here where the pivot 
came into where you're going through this personal journey for your own fitness and your own health. And then where did it pivot to, I, I can help other people with this issue. Yeah. So I think personally, you know, I was always uh, really adamant about trying to up my education around nutrition and performance and training and all that. And, but it was really, I think when I had, I guess, was going through that own personal transformation of my own, right? Post football career, I didn't need to be 240 plus pounds anymore. So I really wanted to change my physique, the way I looked and felt and sought out, you know, nutrition and, and you know, diet as the primary method of, of making that change because I was always trained at a very high level, obviously during football, but also, you know, I continued to do that after football and was kind of stuck. I had a plateau, like nothing was really changing. But it, once I started to kind of make modifications with the way I was feeling my body, that's mm -hmm. when I started to see massive transformation physically, but also, you know, mentally and energy wise and everything else. And I would see later when I had the opportunity to live in Italy for the first time, I saw, you know, a totally different approach to just life and, and really nutrition and food kind of being at the center of all that, you know, how, you know, present and mindful they are about bringing, you know, people together around the, the dining table, whether that's, mm. you know, for lunch in the middle of the day and carving out, you know, an hour or two to do that, or, you know, those family, big family, Italian, you know, <laughs> dinners yeah. together. Like uh, 10 courses, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is, you know, you see like the grandmothers, they're going to the, sh the, the market like pretty much every day. And a lot of it is still kind of, they've maintained that, that local production methodology where you've got your local butcher, your local, you know, producer, your mm -hmm. local artisanal cheese manufacturer, lo you know, it's still localized. I mean, the, the supermarkets definitely exist, but a lot of them are still in that habit of going to those like local shops. And so even when I was buying from the supermarket, one of the things I noticed is that the uh, produce that I was buying would perish very quickly, you know, in a matter mm. of a few days. And that's still the case now. Like we just went to the farmer's market today, loaded up and, you know, you've got to pretty much eat everything within a certain, you know, three to five day timeline or it starts to spoil. Right. Yeah. So kind of, you know. I had an aha moment because when I shot back in the U S my stuff will last. I can leave stuff on the counter for a week. Yeah. yeah right. No problem. Still looks perfectly <laughs> right. So just kind of start to wander and you start to dig into kind of what's going into the food, even like, you know, the healthy, you know, produce and all that stuff. Like there's so many, so many additional inputs that don't necessarily exist or allow in like Europe and other markets. And especially if you're, you know, going to like a local producer who's got their own land and they're, you know, mm, doing it in the right. right way. You know, it's hard to trust like the big supermarket chains just because of that industrialization process right. they have to do just to keep stuff on the, the shelves. So, and, and I know that Europe is a lot tighter in terms of the restrictions around what chemicals they can use in their soil yeah. for production. And yeah, it's, it's, it makes it really a, a challenge, honestly, because I remember doing a deep dive and learning how they like inject certain fruits to make them look brighter and more yeah. appealing to the eye. And it's just kind of gross. Why, what are we, why are we doing this to things that are going to go into our bodies? Yeah, it's um, all crazy. <laughs> but yeah. going back to that, so that kind of planted the seed for me. And then it was like post football when I was trying to figure out what to do career wise, I actually got started in the uh, nutraceutical industry. And so I was working for a bariatric nutrition company, which really upscaled my understanding and knowledge of nutrition more in a holistic and functional matter, mm. as opposed to what was, you know, you know, like the traditional, I guess, supplement industry, which right. doesn't really take a more a science driven approach to what they're doing. And so what we did at that nutraceutical company is we were really integrated into the bariatric surgical practices. And we had to operate at an extremely high level to make sure that you know our science acumen and product line was up to the standards of what you know these brilliant you know surgeons uh yeah. you know are are in their level of education the challenge is that most doctors don't get an ounce of you know nutritional education throughout their right. entire curriculum in, in medical school so the, we were really kind of their trusted partners to handle the nutritional side of things and it was really during that time 
where, again, I elevated my education of nutritional IQ tremendously, but also was able to kind of travel the country and, you know, work firsthand with a lot of the folks that were struggling with diabetes and obesity and other, you know, lifestyle diet related illnesses and, you know, a lot of the nutritional deficiencies that kind of coincided with a lot of, you know, those, those chronic illnesses. And yeah. I think when I started to see, started to look beyond just like, I guess the overweight and obese population and more general population and dig into the science, it shows that basically 95% or more of us, even on a healthy diet are not getting the optimal levels of vitamins and minerals we need daily. Mm. Yeah. And, and um, there's a doctor, a Dr. Bruce Ames, who developed the nutritional triage theory of aging. And that posits when you are not providing your body with that basic, you know, level of vitamins and minerals on a daily basis, it basically flips a switch from long-term health to short-term survival. And mm. so you kind of open up Pandora's box for disease and illness and all this stuff because the body's you know essentially starting to break down even in a, like if you can't look in the mirror and recognize it right it's this silent thing that's occurring on a biochemical standpoint right that's accelerating the aging process because your body needs these key vitamins minerals phytonutrients to you know keep you healthy and be able to thrive repair you know cells and all that stuff right so right. What's uh, that called again? What was that called again? So Dr. Bruce Ames triage theory is the best way to, to find it. And there's a white paper that you can take a look at, but it's, yeah, it's a pretty interesting theory. Does it tie it in with leaky gut at all? Is that part of the theory behind it or is that I've separate? It down to like a specific, it, it's mostly around micronutrients. If you really get into the weeds on it, right. And, and figure out, okay, well, why aren't we getting the nutrients from food alone? Right. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the bigger question, right. And it, it's a, it's a myriad of factors. So one of them is definitely like the gut, right. And having dysbiosis, or you basically have destroyed the villi in the gut, the cell wall. Yeah. With your key uh, nutrient absorption sites, right. So you might not be absorbing nutrients the same way if you have damaged your gut. And a lot of us, you know, based off, you know, a lot of these chemicals that are added to food and different factors like antibiotics and other things have really yeah. destroyed that healthy gut. Right. And so yeah. as a result, you're, you're less equipped to process nutrients from food. Right. And yeah. then there's systematic <laughs> kind of process that ensues in terms of leaky gut, which then can turn into some of these autoimmune disorders and start to trigger that, you know, a cascade of different things. Uh, right. The other challenge is, is, is just really on the, the food manufacturing side, right? So the nutrient density of our soil has been mm. drastically diminished and reduced over the past few decades. So, you know, fruit and vegetables, you know, today are less nutrient dense than they were just, you know, a decade or two ago, right? Yeah. It's much yeah. certain ones are like 30% or more less nutrient dense, right? So that means yeah. you have to eat X amount more to get the same just amount nutrients, right? And so that creates another problem because we don't have a, a calorie problem in, in the Western world predominantly, right? We have, we get plenty of calories, but we're not getting plenty of nutrition, right? And so yeah. it's weird yeah. dichotomy where we've got calories and food kind of on demand everywhere you look, but yeah. still undernourished from a uh, population standpoint. And then you look at Kind of the long transit times of food right we, we we buy apples from new zealand we get stuff shipped kind of halfway across the world and that's just the modern food system as it exists today but if you think about like how are these like precious blueberries surviving a trip from you know <laughs> if they're not right. grown locally and they've got to you know pick them well before they're they're ripe so they're even less nutrient dense right and that there's a lot of other I guess additive chemicals, you name it, that go into the processing to, to keep them preserved and fresh throughout that that journey and still looking pretty on supermarket shelves, and essentially. The, and a lot of those farms that they are sourced from are like monocropped farms. And that's a, exactly. another major reason why the, the soil is just so nutrient depleted because it's really only looking for a couple key nutrients. Yeah. That's why 
and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I might be a little outdated on this, but that's why I heard that why, why it's so important to do crop cycling to exactly. keep different minerals being the primary user for different produce. That's exactly right. And if you, you know, if a lot of the, what's grown now, but in the monocrop agriculture industry, it's grown on dead soil, right? So it's like mm. at a point where it's like, it's almost zero nutrients in the soil, right? They're still able to grow food due to all like the other like chemicals and stuff. And it's, you know, one nutrient that they know it needs to be able to produce something. Right. That's all they care about. Right. Right. Yeah, inside is not really, you know, giving us much, much nutrients. And in the soil density, you look at really healthy, high quality soil, it, it's very much like the human microbiome, right? You've got all mm -hmm. these, you know, amazing micronutrients and microorganisms going on. Diversity. That yeah. And, you know, that's the same reason why, like, our, you know, gut microbiome needs specific prebiotic fibers to continue to, you know, feed the healthy microbiota in the gut. Mm -hmm. So you got to think about it the same way, right? Your, yeah. your flora and the gut are kind of like your garden, right? You need. Yeah prebiotic fibers to continue to feed them and help them thrive and kind of push out some of the, you know, more harmful bacteria that exists. And when it flips the equation, right, you're, you're feeding the bad bacteria with more like dairy based stuff or ultra processed foods and, and destroying that, then that's where a lot of, you know, health issues really start is, yeah. is in that dysbiosis in the, in the gut. And just to piggyback on that, like a, a majority of our mitochondria is localized in our gut. So, you know, if you have a, a problem with your gut, you're going to have poor energy production. And if you damage your mitochondria, it's going to hurt your longevity. So, you know, you, you, you have any issues around your gut, it's going to affect your performance and your longevity. And those are, are two big important things to uh, address. Yeah. So, and if you think about it, we're more, we're more bacteria than we actually are human cells, right? And each of those yeah. bacteria have their own mitochondria DNA, you know, so yeah. it's really important to keep those healthy because that's going to, you know, affect everything else that's going on in the body. Yeah, like we, we have like 30 trillion cells in our body. And I think only, and I forget the number on this, it's like 5% or something or unique human cells or something crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty astounding. Like how much we are of like those microorganisms just virus and protozoa and everything. So how do you, because I think a lot of times we're taught just the basics, right? Like you said, like just get this many calories in a day and eat the food pyramid. And how do you guys help sort of smash that to pieces and make nutrition a more like personalized approach? Yeah. So the food pyramid, I think we can all agree is basically broken, right? It's not yeah. in anybody, right? If we're, I mean, we're basically on the course to bankrupt the U S economy with healthcare, you know, <laughs> cost yeah, right. for the next decade. Right. So if it was serving us well, we wouldn't have obesity at the rates that we have. I think it's, I saw a statistic. It's 70% of the U S population is now overweight or obese. 70%. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Right. So this food pyramid or food plate, which it is now is it's just misguided, you know, and you have to think about it, too. It's a lot of I just want to add one yeah. thing in there. And that point is like where we spend the most on healthcare out of every nation in the world. Yep. But we're ranked like 50 or 60 in terms of health. So yep. something's wrong there with this department. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, they, they need the leadership to say the least, but it's really, you know, if you it's follow the money, right? And so you look at, you know, what's informing policy, right? And it's, you know, like look at school lunches, right? I think to get reimbursed for school lunches, it's required to have like a carton of dairy, uh, dairy milk in every one of those lunches to get reimbursed, right? So it's gotcha. subsidized, subsidized, highly influenced by, you know, these major industries, which are big food, big ag and, you know, meat and dairy industry. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's tough to kind of rewind that, but the best way I guess that we all can is really by, by voting with our dollar. Right. And I love that yeah. smarter choice about how we're fueling our bodies. Now, you know, willpower is challenging, right? Like <laughs> the junk food, it's everywhere. You can't go to an office uh, supply store now with having, having like Snickers and candy and everything at the checkout line. That's just, 
you know, it's crazy to me to see that. Um, well, it's the cards are stacked against against yeah. us because the highest paid psychologists in the world work on these bliss point studies to, yeah. and they take kids yeah. and they try to find the right level of crunch and salty and sweet and savory so that they don't stop. And then they're like, okay, we're done. The product's good. And I think everyone can relate because when you open up a bag of chips, you don't, you don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you, know, you put a, a plate of, you know, pork chops or chicken breasts in front of you and you will get full. Exactly. <laughs> All that nutrient dense. Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, it's definitely, we're all up against a pretty tough challenge. And the biggest thing I think that we can do is like, it starts with a more mindfulness approach to the way that you fuel your body, right? So reestablishing a relationship with fuel and food and really redefining what we accept as food. I would say 95 or 99% of the stuff out there is not food, right? It's just right. Uh, chemical stuff that's been, you know, engineered in a lab to uh, satiate or trigger those dopamine response, right? And there's yeah. some interesting studies around like sugar and cocaine and like, you know, the sugar being actually more addictive than cocaine and like some of the mice yeah. trials that they did. It's, it's crazy stuff, right? Yeah. So I think getting back to a whole food based approach, right? Where I'm not saying you need to go follow any specific type of diet, or, you know, what you got to find what works for you, but it all starts with the elimination of mm. ultra processed foods. Now, mm. you know, whether that's also meaning reducing meat consumption, that's something that I think everybody should start to question, right? And it's based off your goals, your lifestyle, and what it is you're trying to optimize for, right? If, mm -hmm. if you're a high level athlete, or, you know, somebody that's just working out constantly, and physique is really important, you're trying to build muscle, then like your protein requirements are going to be different than just, you know, the average person. And for the yeah. average person, I think a lot of times in the American diet, we're eating as if we're all like some sort of athlete, right? Because yeah. we're, we're consuming all these calories and, and, and we're doing it a lot of times without even realizing it, right? You go to yeah. a Starbucks, nobody orders like a, a regular coffee anymore, right? Like here in Italy, an espresso is like literally, it's like an ounce of, you know, coffee. A coffee right. is like a gallon with like half sugar, half whipped cream yeah. and a bunch of other stuff, right? So I think that's really the best place to start is getting back to the way our ancestors ate, right? Which means largely a whole food plant centric diet, right? The perimeter, what's on the perimeter of the grocery store. And then, you know, obviously when you start to get into, I guess the weeds of all this and get into those specific groups, right? If we are talking about meat, we're probably not going to thrive on a like no meat diet, right? Like a raw vegan diet is really tough for a lot of people to thrive on and sustain over the long term. Some yeah. people might do great, but it's also, I think it's really important to understand that we all have, you know, different genetics. We all have come from different socioeconomic upbringings and all that really has an impact on, you know, what is optimal for us. And so until yeah. we arrive at a place where, food and nutrition is truly personalized, taking into consideration all these, you know, different factors, we're so far away from, you know, the ideal diet. It doesn't, doesn't exist, right? And under right. this broad approach to nutrition. So I think it really starts from like, okay, what is it that I'm trying to attain, right? Am I trying to lose weight? Am I trying to gain weight? Am I trying to optimize for longevity? You know, what are, what are my, my goals, right? And then how do I find a lifestyle approach to diet and nutrition that, that works for me, right? And I've, I've done a lot of this stuff. I've been an NF1 experiment through keto and veganism. And like we actually, when I was at the nutritional, uh, nutritional company, we brought the first ketogenic program to market because it, to was, market. Wow. Yeah, it was a great way for, you know, people to go through like a medical weight loss program prior to, or maybe avoiding surgery altogether. This was probably mm. five or 10 years before like the keto craze. Took yeah. And, you know, a lot of diets do work temporarily. The challenge is it's very difficult to sustain them long-term, right? Mm. Like, weighing and measuring food every single day, that's a massive chore, right? It's not something right. I really recommend for any, but if you're really yeah. in your macros and you're trying to optimize for every last like ounce of fat on your body, then 
that's probably what you need to do, but you're probably like a competitive bodybuilder or something like that. Right. Oh, right. right. Again, it goes back to like, what is the the goal? And if it's just to generally feel really good, to be able to kind of live a fulfilled, active lifestyle, then most people will be fine with just cutting out the ultra processed foods because those are the most inflammatory foods on the market and sticking with a largely you know, whole food plant-based diet that's plant-centric and, and that'll serve you well. And I think as you kind of progress, there's different things that you can try, you know, in intermittent fasting and just like, you know, controlling that feeding window. I think the, the, I think the most important thing about that, I mean, there's some great longevity benefits to it, but it also kind of puts you back in control of hunger and food, which is a lot of time why we seek out, you know, these suboptimal nutrition forms in the first place, right? Because it's either our brain or our, our, our belly saying, oh, you know, I'm hungry. I gotta, I gotta go eat something now or I'm gonna starve to death. I mean, we can go, what is it, 30 days without eating, right? So yeah, yeah. You know, we don't need to eat every, you know, hour or two hours or, you know, any of that. Well, we've been trained to consume, consume, consume. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a, and there's some science about the theories behind, you know, if you're, if you just keep eating all day long, it's because your brain really hasn't gotten the nutrients it's looking for. And you probably are eating more of the ultra processed and the junk and like we were saying before, I know they've done studies where people can sit down and eat a full bag of, of chips, any brand, versus they put a plate of, of chicken breast or pork chops in front of them, and then eventually they will get full. And yep. we have different hormones that satiate us, and they are based on what, what the body's receiving. So exactly. it definitely, definitely plays a major role. Well, there's a, d- a delay. Is it the, I think it's the ghrelin hormone, right? So yeah. 30 minute or so delay between, you know, the gut sending a signal to the brain and saying, okay, I'm satiated. I'm full. I've, I've had enough. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you're dealing with like these snack foods or whatever, you're not giving your body and your brain time to let that yeah. signal fire. So like you, you do, you eat an entire bag of Doritos before you've realized that you just powered through 2000 calories in 10 minutes. Right. Right. And it hasn't, you know, satiated you. Done right? anything for you, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, do do part of your approach, because I know that you guys sell a lot of different recipes and products through Life Fuel, but do you guys also offer any coaching for people who need help along the way? Yeah, so we, well, I, I guess to the products, we try to keep a very simplified approach to nutrition. So we do a lot more with less. So it's a more comprehensive, you know, if you look at the average, I guess, supplement company, you'll see, you know, a product for pretty much every vitamin or nutrient you could ever name, right? So it's A to Z mm-hmm. vitamins, and that would cost you a fortune <laughs> to, yeah. to do and keep up. And, and, and candidly, most of the stuff you don't actually need or absorb in the first place. So we sought out to take a more comprehensive approach to nutrition that's really centered around this essentialist idea of what are the key vitamins and minerals that are lacking or missing from um, modern diets and how can we put that all together in you know a a form that people actually look forward to using on a daily basis right you can start your day with a shake that tastes great it's got you know protein it's got you know your greens your phytonutrients all the antioxidants vitamin minerals you would need just to you know lay that nutritional foundation then if there's other things that you want to do for like you know performance boost or clarity or stuff like we've got a couple things there but like that is going to serve most people well enough and obviously if you're an athlete we've got some other things but to kind of sort through all this and get started and move away from, you know, standard American diet or wherever you're at today, we've developed our transformation program. And the intention with that is to really build a bridge away from, you know, the standard American diet or, you know, a a plateau to bring you closer, closer to, you know, that life you want to live. Right. And it really starts and is centered around, you know, a whole food plant-based lifestyle, but also taps into these other, you know, holistic wellness principles that really contribute to reduced stress, better health, more longevity, right? Because it's not just, you know, one thing it's doing all these things in synergy that really contribute Mm. to overall wellness, right? Because I love that you use that word. Yeah. 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 Right. Like like, the the system working together better than the sum of its separate parts. It's so important. Exactly. 
Yeah, it's the, it's really the only way to approach because if you look at the the human body, it's so interconnected. Everything operates, and if one thing is off, it kind of throws everything else in the body off. Like yeah. an example of that, I've been dealing with this like chronic like hip issue for quite some time. It's been nagging me for almost two years now. Finally, mm-hmm. I've been getting massages and everything frequently, doing a lot of like myofascial tissue release and everything. And nothing seemed to work. Went in and saw, you know, Cairo last week and it was kind of like an energy, like she's really, really mm. into it, like the energy systems in the body. And, yeah. you know, I had a, this is my right hip. And so she was working on the right hip and then like she got into my shoulder and then digging around in the shoulder. And she's like, that's the twin of your hip. It's actually a lot of this stuff that's going on in your shoulder that's triggering the, the hip issues. And I had yeah. surgery on my left shoulder like 20 something years ago. And this week I've, I've felt better than I felt, you know, the past yeah. two years with my hip and it's incredible. It wasn't, you know, it was, you know, but that's the importance of these integrated systems that exist in, in the body, both, you know, on a nutritional level, a physiological level, it's just all interconnected. And so we really need to approach wellness with that attitude. It's holistic it's mindset. Be, you know, yeah lifting weights for my brain, right? I got to put in the meditation hours, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Keeping my brain strong, you know, and, and exercising, moving my body is a lot of times just as much to reduce stress, relieve anxiety, you know, get more mental clarity as it is for, you know, the muscles and, and everything else. Yeah, man, yeah. Like, I feel like we've, we're moving towards that direction, thankfully, like, with the whole functional medicine as well, instead of just treating someone for pain, oh, you have a rock in your shoe, let's give you Advil. It's like, let's yeah. find that rock and let's remove it from the system so it can yeah. operate. Yeah. So I, I learned through longevity paradox that we actually recycle 20% of our protein consumption every day. Do you find that with your athletes? Because I guess it, you know, it seems very archaic to say, eat your body weight in grams of protein every single day. And I, I had a little bit more sensitive gut issues that I couldn't process that all, every day. But do you find that with your athletes, you can get away with a modified model to, to that large protein consumption? Yeah. I still need to have that, that high level. You know, it's a, it's a great question. And I don't have like the scientific answer for that. Yeah. I think yeah. there are some, I guess, pretty basic understanding, like for building I guess, putting on muscle mass or or body mass for, you know, that matter, you need a caloric surplus, right? So let's start with like macronutrients, right? So let's say you got to put on, you have to eat 500 calories more per day than you're burning, right? So the question becomes, where are those calories going to come from? Are those going to be fat calories? Are they going to be protein calories? Are they going to be carbohydrates? Are they going to be a mix of, of both, right? And so Again, that's a different scenario, but you're like needing that protein to repair. And it's really the branching amino acids from the protein mm. itself to repair the lean muscle. So in theory, you might be able to reduce your total like dietary protein as long as you're still getting in those branch chain amino acids, the, the leucine, isoleucine, and valine that are going to help mm. repair and rebuild the muscle. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to stay in a zone of muscle protein synthesis for as, as long as possible. Right. And keep growing um, and repairing and layering. Yeah, a, a muscle protein um, deficit where you're kind of losing, you know, muscle and, and kind of burning through it. So basically there's what's known as the leucine threshold. And that's where, you know, there's some really interesting science around what that is. And it's different for everybody. It, it kind of, it's age dependent, it's activity dependent. There's a lot of factors, I guess, that go into it. And unless hitting that leucine threshold, then you're not kick, kicking into muscle protein synthesis where you're actually able to repair and build muscle. And so, yeah, I think there are, in terms of like feeding cycles and like the timeline between that, I think becomes very intricate and different for athletes than it does for, for humans. But I think also the other thing about protein consumption, you know, as you age, you know, muscle loss accelerates. And Mm -hmm. so it is more challenging to keep and build, you know, lean muscle, you know, once you get into like your forties and and fifties, sixties and there on. So I think 
the, the general protein requirements are set pretty far low for like that type of purpose. And so it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's tough. I think there's a, a few ways to approach it, but it, it comes down to yeah. like the, the individual. Content. Yeah. The individual and like, again, what yeah, you're losing threshold. For. Yeah. 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 So you obviously have, uh, I think you have a post-workout recovery that yeah. has some BCAAs in it. Yeah, exactly. And so that was the intention was to help meet that leucine threshold. So, threshold. That, you know, in that post fueling, you know, whether if there's, you know, there used to be, oh, you got to, you know, refuel within 20 or 30 minutes after your workout. There's been a lot of science that has kind of disproved that theory. As long as you're having okay. a meal, you know, within the next like, you know, two hours. So yeah, then you're, okay. you're kind of replenished, but that's also assuming that maybe you had something within that hour or two window before you worked out. So you don't want to go too long with Depleted. Without, yeah, because then you're not going to have the proper nutrients to, you know, build and repair the muscle. And so what we did with the post-workout recovery shake is really, you know, protein is just one piece of the puzzle, right? And BCAAs are just one piece of the puzzle. If you look at, you know, what really helps with recovery, it's really the phytonutrients and antioxidants to replenish the body. And that really helps kind of alleviate some of the soreness and, and other things. You also look at athletes, they have higher tendencies of being depleted in like vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, B vitamins. And so we wanted to create a more complete, you know, meal similar to what we did with our essential shakes. That's kind of more geared towards somebody who's living a very active lifestyle. So it's got those BCAs as part of the protein complex in there. The, the combinations of proteins are bioequivalent to what you'd see in like a, a whey based protein because they, okay. they fill up each other's limiting amino acids. So the knock against plant protein a lot of times is, um, that it's incomplete and an incomplete source of protein. Right. And a right. lot of examples you'll see are pretty poor because it'll compare like a piece of steak to like kidney beans or something. Right. Right. That's assuming that this person is eating steak all day. And this person is just <laughs> the only protein source that they eat is kidney beans. Right. And so right. most plant-based eaters, they're eating a very, you know, diet, they're getting protein from, you know, broccoli, beans, rice, a lot of different places. And that kind of makes sure you round out the nutritional, uh, that makes it more complete. Profile. Exactly. And so that's what we, and that was really important to us, you know, to make sure that an athlete, if they're going to use our products would have that complete protein source to make sure that it can build and repair, um, lean muscle equivalent to whey without all the inflammatory side effects that exist in whey. So that's <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, you have to um, do like, you know, because most of that is coming from like these highly industrialized, you know, dairy farms, right? Because byproduct is just, you know, whey is a byproduct of milk and cheese production. And so like the same hormones, the same inhumane treatment of those animals, the same stress response, that's all passed on to, you know, what your uh, human body is going to, you know, absorb that and recognize it. And that's why, like I had... My gut was a mess every time I had a whey protein shake, you know, I felt more inflamed, like it was, you know, it was not good. So a lot of, in, in most people, I mean, if you think about it, whey being a derivative of, you know, cow's milk, cow's milk is, has one real purpose. It's to feed a baby cow, right? Mm -hmm. Human's milk is made for <laughs> baby humans, right? Like right. the idea that we should be living off, you know, cow's milk and have that as part of like the food pyramid or my plate is, you know, total nonsense, right? It's not something that right. we eat and it's not something that most people thrive on, especially if you look at like- It's, it's one hand washed in the other. You yeah. Know, it's just yeah, pushed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, like anybody, like who, anybody with Asian ethnicity that's terrible with dairy generally because it's not something that their culture was ever, you know, used to eating. So the DNA, the, or the it's not in their genes to be able to process that. To process right? that. So, Again, there's a trigger in the body. There's an inflammatory response that your body's going like, what the heck is this stuff? And it kicks yeah. off that inflammation cycle and, and in more severe cases in an autoimmune uh, response. Yeah, and people are doing that every day and then they're yeah. in chronic stress, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So little side note on the dairy before I wanted to move on to talk more about the vitamins in the essential shake. I remember I learned recently about the A1 cows versus the A2 cows. Yep. And it's something that's been newer coming to the States where I'm able to actually find A2 milk. Yep. And I've been astonished at how my body can process it versus 
a typical milk product and I would be running for the bathroom immediately. Is that, is that something that you've experienced as well personally? Yeah, it is interesting. So I, I had an opportunity, spent pretty much all of, was it 2020 and part of 2021 living in New Zealand. And if you look at kind of the beef and dairy, a lot of, you know, the, the better for you products actually come from New Zealand because of, you know, if you go there, it's just like green pastures everywhere. They're, you know, humanely treated. It's a lot better than, I guess, our standards in the U.S. But, you know, the, in the U.S., a lot of states have outlawed like raw milk production, which is where the A2 is, is more common. And it comes from certain, I think, types of dairy cows too. So I think all cows yeah. have both A1 and A2, but the yeah. few cows just have the A2 protein. Yeah, it, it does tend to digest better than, I guess, just regular cow's milk. However, like I think there's still some other Challenge. Jury's still out. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, you know, as well versed in like all the difference. It's funny that you mentioned it because I was doing a little bit of research today. Nice. A1 nice. and A2 because I saw a company that somebody brought to my attention. So they're making vegan whey protein. So it's animal free whey protein, but it's still, you know, in a lab or something. Yeah, yeah, it's through a fermentation process. So they, you know, create the same DNA or whatever of these microbes and they go, I guess, create Interesting. A similar to what it is. So it's, it's definitely better from an environmental standpoint, I believe, right. and, you know, large scale dairy farming. However, from like a nutrition standpoint, it's still going to present some of the same challenges as, as dairy, right? And again, I think it goes back to the argument that cow's milk was not intended for you know humans right. <laughs> it's intended right. for baby calves and to get you know a baby calf to grow 300 pounds in a matter of, of months right or more yeah so yeah there's some i'd be happy to send you some more information there's a uh, group that i've done some work with called switch for good and it's about you know raising awareness you know especially within the athletic community uh, a lot of former Olympians and stuff trying to champion the, the narrative that, you know, milk does a body good. I mean, a lot of the problems that, you know, are exist with, you know, considering, you know, I guess dairy, uh, a health food. But um, again, I think it goes down to it's not about demonizing any one food group. If you love cheese, if you love dairy, then obviously I think the A2 is probably going to be better, especially if it's coming from you know, cow that's being humanely raised and treated. Right. It's not being, right. you know, injected with a bunch of hormones and steroids and other stuff. Right. So it's like, yeah. you have to take all that other thing into consideration. So it's not just the A2 protein oh, yeah. that kind of solves one thing on the digestion side. There's a bigger, I guess, Pandora's box that needs to be explored when it comes yeah. to dairy. Yeah, like not, not just, you know, you are what you eat, eats. That's not yeah. just the only case. It's also what, what was injected into the cow that's going to affect its gene expression for, you know, the meat that you're going to be consuming from it or the products you're going to be consuming from it. And then the stress that it's uh, raised in because a lot of them, like you said, like the, the mass dairy farms are, they're kind of kept in pens and they can't move and they're, they're highly stressed already. And that, that plays a role. I mean, we, we already know for hunters have known for, a long time that if you don't kill an animal quick enough, it'll into the secrete hormones into the meat. I, I guess stress yeah. cortisol into the meat, so it, it definitely plays a role. But but before we run out of time, I wanted to also hear more about the vitamins and and what's kind of essential in the main nutrition shake that you guys offer. Yeah, so in the essential shake, you'll see we've got <clears throat> 27 different um, micronutrients. And what's really unique about our formulation, so in every serving, you're getting at least, for the most part, 50% daily value. So broad spectrum. And that's pretty standard, I think, for like, <clears throat> I think in like a nutrition shake or meal replacement category, you'll see it anywhere from like 10% up to maybe 20 or 30% daily value for like most nutrients. So we're superior on that front, but where we really differ is like the elevated nutrients for what's lacking or missing most. So vitamin D3, K2, mm. um, actually can't think of another product that has K2 in it. And those two mm -hmm. together are super important for bone health, but also shuttling calcium out of the arteries and into the bones, iodine, magnesium, B12, mm. which again is 
extremely important for, especially for anybody following a vegan or a plant-based diet, because you're not going to get B12 at all. You have to supplement with it. Um, so that's really kind of our approach is we really looked at like the gaps and elevated those above and beyond just like a, a you know, random 20% across the board. So it's, you know, more doubt in that way. And then we've got a, a full serving of organic greens included. So, you know, I love that. I, yeah. I've tried a bunch of the green shakes and I just could never really get into doing them on a daily basis. Like t- tested one recently. It tastes like bubble gum. It was kind of a weird, <laughs> yeah. weird but it, they're just not very good. And so we wanted to taste, create something that still included like the greens and the berries and all these, you know, incredible superfoods, all your vitamins and minerals. Let's cover the full spectrum. I love yeah, it. So if you imagine yeah. like you could create a perfect plate, right? Which what we should, you know, the, <laughs> the standard. Ideally of want to be, right. Kind of what we've thought about putting into our shape, right? And something you can actually look forward to on a daily basis that completely nourishes the body gives you that nutritional insurance that you need to make sure, you know, your cell, your brain, your body is getting again, all those core nutrients. And then, you know, you're complementing that with a, you know, healthy diet, whatever that, you know, means for, for you personally, based off your goals. Right. It's not like, it's not like you can just take these shakes and go out and eat McDonald's and Taco Bell. People. Yeah. You need to, yeah, exactly. It's a full uh, approach. Yeah. We get people, you know, it's, it is interesting because we get people that I think are, are trying to accelerate that, you know, maybe it's weight loss or something. They really want to get there quickly and say, okay, can I, you know, just do these shakes and you could, right. Because they do have all the sustenance that your body needs and thus the name life fuel, right. You could live off <laughs> life fuel, but why would you want to, right? Like, they, yeah. like you really should love and enjoy and appreciate real whole food because that's going to be the best thing that you could put in your body. Um, life fuel, like our product line is really there to, to complement and, and provide additional nutritional support that the science is showing we're not getting enough of in the, the diet, even if you're you know following a more healthy uh, whole food diet. Right, right. Yeah, the data just shows that we're all undernourished and missing key vitamins. So I wanted to just wrap up. I have a couple questions left before we run out of time. Are there any current endeavors that you guys are working on? Any new lines that you're working on? Anything? Yeah, so we've got a lot in the pipeline actually at the moment. So cool. we're, we're in the midst of a pretty significant brand refresh. And really what that entails is we're doubling down on our core principles of quality, efficacy, and sustainability. So we really want to bring transparency to the forefront, really tell the stories of where our ingredients are coming from, the farms, the farmers, I love that. the ingredients, and really try to, you know, lead by example and reconnect people with, you know, food and, and the ingredients and what goes on behind the scenes. And part of that process is like the Essential Shake is really that hero product. That's what we launched with. I spent probably, I think, two years just creating that formulation. I spent past three years <laughs> on a new, uh, new and improved formulation based off customer feedback and innovation in the marketplace in terms of the ingredients. And with that new formulation, we will be, I think the first hundred percent whole food, uh, plant-based product in the category. You know, most products still rely on synthetic vitamins and minerals, but because of the innovation and advancement, what you can do with your whole foods, we're able to now accomplish that in uh, a single shake. So that's really exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. And we kind of have championed this essential nutrition movement that we've now created our custom mix that's in development of those key essential vitamins and minerals that I just spoke to you about. And we're going to find new delivery forms to then include them. And so we've got a, a bar, like an essentials bar that's coming down the pipeline here in the next couple months. So it's basically similar to what you get in our shake, but in a bar format. And each one of those has like a target superfood. So we're launching with two flavors. One is a lemon, lemon ginger tart, and that includes uh, ginger and turmeric as the, the hero superfoods. And Great then, antioxidants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got a fudgy brownie one that's going to be cacao and maca. So great for, you know. The, you had me at fudgy brownie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. So, yeah, it's exciting. That's exciting. That's going to help, I guess, round out our transformation program, which is really the best place for somebody to start their journey with us at Life Fuel. Um, yeah. because, like the the long term goal is to really, you know, start to walk this line of personalized nutrition, personalized wellness, right, and really start to understand, okay, 
what is it? What is your number one health bottleneck? Is it sleep? Is it focus? Is it energy? Is it weight loss? How can we kind of design a, a program using real whole foods and our products as a foundation to help you overcome that in a shorter period of time and then provide you with the education tools and resources you need to really sustain that over the long term? Yeah, I love it. I love it. So definitely the holistic approach. Yeah. And I look forward to seeing your products on the shelves in the in the markets. Yeah. So uh, last two questions. What's your favorite lift? I always ask people this. Favorite lift. I would probably say uh, clean and cleans would be my favorite lift. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, probably years of football training, right? And it's just such a dynamic fun movement cleans and snatch would kind of go back and forth like snatch is how i screwed up my shoulder but, but it's such like it's a really challenging movement and to do yeah. high loads it's it's pretty exciting to prove a lot fun, yeah. you know to do it so i would say definitely yeah one of those two. awesome and then do you have a favorite quote or maybe just one that comes to mind today favorite quote that comes to mind today would be so just thinking of the the one above my my weight room in my high school locker room it is kind of a series of quotes so it's kind of it's a question you ask yourself so have i done everything today to make myself better have i done everything today to make the team better and then how do i want to be remembered that's something that's always kind of stuck with me I, just like look at it every single day for, for yeah. my life that you know just always resonate and it's good just kind of daily i think check-in right and i think it's yeah. something that we can all think about like how can i improve by a fraction of a percent today what can i do to make a, a micro improvement in my right. life going to make myself better those around me better um and the world better just a little bit better each day exactly just, it's slow consistent effort i love it well, Chris, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for coming on and telling us all about Life Fuel. And yeah, anything else you want to say to wrap up? Where can people find more about you? Yeah, so the best place is just directly through our website. It's lifefuel.com. That's life with a Y. And that's an acronym for live your fullest every day. So it's lifefuel.com. Yeah, I think that's the best spot. Obviously, we've got social channels, but the, the main area of our focus and attention to kind of take people away from all the distractions that it just <laughs> noise really through yeah. lifefuel.com. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Chris. And I'll put everything in the show notes for people so they can find your links there as well. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Hey, and I'm really excited to say that Chris was excited about uh, working together and getting on our podcast that he offered our listeners a 10% discount. So think fitness life 10, Type that in at checkout and you'll get 10% off their products. They have that Essentials Vitamin Shake and the Recovery Shake. I think it's awesome that we get that uh, partnership. So go to lifefuel.com, L-Y-F-E fuel.com. Check out their products and use Think Fitness Life 10 at checkout to get a discount. Enjoy. Thanks for tuning in to the Think Fitness Life podcast. For more information on additional podcasts or YouTube videos or blogs, you can check out our website. That's www.thinkfitnesslife.com, all one word. And if you're looking for more additional services other than just the do-it-yourself approach, we offer programming, monitoring, and training where you can get additional information on that at our website as well. Or you can send us a message at thinkfitnesslife, all one word, at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Catch you next time. If you're ready all to right. make steps towards improving your health or increasing your performance, book a free 30-minute call today by visiting thinkfitnesslife.com.